Hi, I'm Craig Price with Surface Water Solutions. Welcome to our next video in this series on what's new in HECRAS 5.0.4. In this video, we're going to cover the introduction of variable time steps. Now, there's a whole lot to this topic that we won't cover here, but before we get started, uh, anyone messing around with the variable time steps needs to understand the current number. Um, if you aren't familiar with it, uh, go ahead and read this bit in the 2D model uh, user manual, and you can just search this for current. And when you, if you have a look at the equation here, it's going to walk you through um, a little bit of the theory behind it. Um, there's a lot more available on the web. Essentially, the current number is the number of grid sizes per computation. So the number of grid cells that water will travel uh, between computations. And if you can get that to be one, that means there's one grid cell per computation. And if it's much greater than one, that means you're skipping grid cells with your computation and that results in instabilities at times. So what I'm going to do is start with the model that we left off with in our previous video about internal boundary conditions. When I ran this one, we had it set at a five second computational interval. And it ran in, I think, about 20 seconds. Um, really, a good model should take hours to run, uh, if not days. These are just for demonstration purposes, and these models really, as a disclaimer, um, aren't uh, very robust at all. So you see, when we get through this, um, I think the overall runtime is about uh, 21 seconds here. If I were to change this and violate all of my current number criteria by taking it up to a minute, this is with a um, 10 meter grid size in some of my areas, it might run a little bit quicker, uh, but you'll probably have some instabilities. You'll have the classic um, vertical wetting front coming down, and you might have some absurd uh, water surface elevations. Even though it might make a nice pretty picture and a good animation, it's probably not a good model. So this one, once I've run it here, see how it just went right through, just saved a few seconds off. Um, that one ran in 17 seconds. Now I'm going to, instead of using this computational interval here um, as a fixed interval, I'm going to take advantage of this new feature, which is the variable time step control. That's going to bring up the same window that you get uh, when you go to the unsteady computation options and tolerances. Now instead of using my fixed time step, I'm going to allow the time step to be adjusted based on the current number. And I've got a maximum set in here of 3, minimum of 0.5, and then uh, how many time steps uh, to prevent the oscillations before it uh, doubles. Uh, if you look here at the number 4 and this other number 4 down here, that's the number of times that you could double it. So I started with 5, and that will take it from 5 to 10, 20, 40, and 80. That's why we've got 80 there. And then again, take 5 and divide it in half 4 times, and you'll get uh, this 0.3. So if I set that, you'll see this message come up. The time step is controlled by the current condition. And now sometimes this will improve the speed of your model. Sometimes it will slow it down, but it should make it uh, more stable and more efficient in focusing the computations where you need them most. So in this case, um, as it runs through, it's going to go through it fairly quickly, but it will now show me the variable time steps that it's using. So when the flood first arrived and my velocities were low, I got up to a one minute time step and that was just fine. As I got further down into the uh, higher flows, it got down to under five. So in the end, this actually took slightly longer to run um, because uh, you were running a tighter time step at the end, um, but you didn't waste your time in the beginning uh, using computations you didn't need. Now in this case, there wasn't much of a difference, a few seconds, but when your model takes days to run, you might be able to shave uh, hours and hours off of your runtime. So with that, um, that's a very quick introduction to the variable time steps. Um, it's something that adds some uh, flexibility to HECRAS um, and gets it uh, more in line with some of the other models out there that have been able to do this for some time. So I'm excited to be able to use this and uh, give me some feedback on what you think about it. And we'll keep posting these videos. Let me know what you want to hear about next. Thanks.